Hello once again, hockey fans. We are inside BMO Harris Bank Center for the first time as Mike Peck, Director of Business Operations, and Joseph Sakshevsky join you today to celebrate the great news that is the release of the 2020-2021 Rockford Ice Songs regular season schedule. And I wanted to catch up with Mr. Peck to go into some of that backstory of how the schedule was built, all the countless meetings, the phone calls, the Zoom calls like we're doing now uh, that had to go on behind the scenes to get this schedule iron ironed out some of the challenges that were presented and then ultimately what you the fans can expect this upcoming season as we roll into a new year so mike great to catch up with you again and actually for us it's really the first couple of days that we've been able to see each other since last march when the season was paused and then eventually canceled but now a lot of hard work has gone into building a, a new season and for the rockford ice songs a 30 game regular season is what it's going to be yeah, no doubt, Joey. It's been uh, it's been a long time coming, right? It's hard to believe that we've we've been off for what almost ten months here, and um, it's 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 really good to have some hockey back. And uh, you know, obviously, the season's going to look a lot different than what what we're used to um, all across hockey, uh, particularly in the minor leagues. Uh, but it's uh, you know what I mean. We're we're grateful that we're going to have some semblance of a season. Um, it's going to be brief, thirty games, uh, just fifteen home, fifteen road. But uh, I think the important thing is that uh, we're taking some steps back to normalcy and, um, you know, the, the schedule, you, you kind of look at it, it is, um, it's, it's brief, but spread out, you know, and um, it, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see how things play out. And I think the top priority is making sure everybody's safe and uh, we get some, some good games in, some good player development and, um, you know, truly just uh, get through this year and let's turn the page to 2021, 2022 and, and uh, hopefully we can get some fans back in the building sooner than later. Well, the Ice Dogs will be opening up that season rather quickly. February 5th, it's opening night at the BMO. It'll be a different looking opening night, but nonetheless, the Ice Dogs will be back on home ice that you, the fans, can certainly be checking in on. And we'll dive into that in just a few moments. But Mike... The league announced a few, you know, uh, numerous releases that, you know, a lot of the games are going to be regional. So when you look at the Ice Hawks schedule, you know, the Chicago's, the Iowa's, the Grand Rapids is Cleveland coming back into the uh, division temporarily. But what were some of the big challenges, even though you have a lot of these teams that are right next door to you? What were some of those those challenges you had to work through to ultimately accomplish this 30 game schedule? Yeah, you know, um, from a challenge perspective, I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, this year, what was different is we didn't have to really battle any other type of events that were coming through here. So we really did have a blank slate. But I think uh, the biggest challenge overall is finding that number of games that each team was comfortable playing. And I think that's probably going to be the, the biggest kind of goofy thing that stands out in the schedule this year in the American Hockey League is every kind of pod of teams is playing a different amount of games. So our, if you want to call it pod, I don't even want to call it a division because uh, you know, the Texas Stars are technically in this division and, and, and we're not going to play them. But, you know, you have Iowa, Chicago, Grand Rapids, Cleveland and the Ice Hogs. You know, uh, pretty much everyone's playing a, a, around 30 games. Actually, that's not even true because Iowa's playing a couple more than that. But uh, I, the, the most important thing is just getting some games in, getting these players on the ice. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's all about the player development. So as for like the challenges, yeah, you know, I think just making – Travel makes sense. Um, I know from our perspective in Rockford, it, the big thing was the safety, not spending a lot of nights overnight on the road. So there's going to be a lot of day of game travel. Sorry, Joe, you're going to spend a lot of time on the bus back and forth, but that's uh, kind of kind of the reality of, of 2020, 2021. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, that's probably the biggest challenge right there was just getting a schedule, working with the leagues and the other the other teams, the other partners in the in the division. Um, on, okay, let's, let's have this make sense for, for you. And it, let's have that make sense for us. And you kind of answered what my next question was going to be is that this schedule is spread out. You start February 5th, you end May 15th, only a small, very small handful of back-to-back -back games. And usually it's against the same opponent, the Clevelands and the Iowas. And I think that's probably why is, is for the abundance of safety and for travel and to make sure that teams can, can travel and, and get to places on time, but also get back home at a reasonable time also. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's uh, all of our start times in Rockford this year will be 6 p.m., um, which is, is obviously a little bit different. We've done that on Saturdays for a number of years now. But, you know, with if it was a normal season where fans were in the building, we wouldn't do that. It'd be very difficult for the fans to get here for a six o'clock game uh, on a midweek or a Friday night. But, uh, you know, with with the games just being televised and being on on, on the radio, 
uh, with our broadcast partners. Um, it's going to be kind of nice because you can come home from work, eat some dinner and, and watch some ice hogs hockey or tune on in. So, um, you know, you, you mentioned kind of, you know, what different aspects around the league. I mean, there, there's one division that's playing every single game, uh, I think at one o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, it's 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 a little bit different thought process this year than what we've had in the past. But at the same time, we still want to take the fans into consideration. We still want to have that interaction. We want them to, to, to take in as many Ice Hogs games as they can, whether it's on TV, through AHL TV, or, or via uh, the, the web stream or 1330. And one of the buzzwords you mentioned before, too, is that even though fans might not be able to attend games at the BMO, the major focus of all this and for the Ice Hawks to be playing is that relationship they have with their big brother down the street, the Chicago Blackhawks, and focusing on player development. The Blackhawks have a great group of young players that are up and coming. It looks like there's going to be a whole slew of rookies and second-year guys that are going to make up this Rockford Ice Hawks roster. What about that was kind of the, the driving force of having the Ice Hawks come in and, and to play this season because of that tight relationship and that close relationship you have with the NHL club down the road. Yeah. I mean, I'd definitely be remiss if we didn't bring up uh, the relationship with the Blackhawks, because if it, if it wasn't for the support of the Chicago Blackhawks, I, I really doubt we would be playing hockey this season. So, you know, they, they've stepped up to the plate to, to make sure that, you know, we could have a season here. And again, I, I know the frustration of not be, being able to have fans in the building to at least start the season. Maybe as the season goes on, that'll change. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously from a Blackhawks perspective, there's a couple of trains of thought. Number one, and that's a big number one, is, is the player development. You know, these, these players, they, they need to be on the ice in some game situations. Um, a lot of them missed, obviously, a small chunk of games last year. But guys that are just, ma you know, making that transition from juniors or college to the pro level. And, you know, Joey, you've watched pro hockey at this level and the ECHL level for a long time. I mean, it's a, it's a big jump. Um, not everybody is, is, you know, Patrick Kane or Connor McDavid or fill in the blank of the elite guys that make that jump from junior or college to the NHL or to the pro level, there's an adjustment period and uh, they need, they need games in the American hockey league. And I think it's going to benefit the Blackhawks in the long run for sure, even though it's a shortened schedule, but uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, the, the Blackhawks have, have really had a, a huge hand in, in, in helping the Rockford Ice Hogs here this season to, to play some games. Well, and you can even look at who's on the Blackhawks right now. I mean, Kevin Lonkinen, the goaltender, making his NHL debut already, had all of last year with the Ice Hogs. You had Philip Kurashev all of last year, even though last year was an abbreviated season. He made his NHL debut. Reese Johnson, Mackenzie Entwistle just got brought back on the taxi squad. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys that are currently there that had an impact on the Ice Hogs last season. So you can only imagine what this season's Hogs team might look like going into the year after and what that can mean for the Chicago Blackhawks. So that's your immediate uh, paying dividends right there for Chicago and Rockford. Well, Mike, now moving into how fans can engage with the Ice Hawks. How can they watch? How can they listen? That's going to be the biggest thing uh, that I've been asked, and I know that you've probably been asked too, is like, okay, well, if fans cannot be in attendance at BMO Harris Bank Center, how can they – join in the fun where can they go and then certainly HL TV is one of them but I know we're really excited to uh, announce that we're coming back to a lot of uh, our favorite broadcast partners here in the state line yeah absolutely and that's the thing we want to we want to make sure that people can still take an ice hogs hockey in their home and you know it's it's it is not going to be the same um, I mean that's that's come out and say it I mean it, being in the BMO Harris Bank Center come February the 5th when there's probably outside of the the, the personnel on the ice, whether you're talking the players, the coaches, or the on-ice officials, there's probably what it could be, what, 40 people in the building from some staff, the team doctors, that's it. I mean, it's just not going to be the same. So we need the Ice Hogs fans to, to be able to, to consume Ice Hogs hockey this year. And you mentioned our great broadcast partners, uh, beginning with our friends over at WIFR and Antenna TV 23.2. You know, just to, to bring to bring the games into, into Ice Hogs fans' home in this market is just so crucial. And then, of course, our friends over at 1330 AM uh, Sports Fan Radio, you know, they've been great partners over the last several years as well. And, uh, and just the support from all of our media partners. But, uh, you know, the ones in our broadcast network, I mean, we're grateful that they're, they're going to carry Ice Hogs hockey this year and allow fans to watch. And, you know, the, the league has set up such a fantastic partnership with AHL TV. So if you're out of the market, 
you, you can watch every single game. And this year it's extremely affordable with just 30 games. And you can watch it all, whether it's on your computer, your smart TV, your, your, your iPhone, your Android, whatever it might be, your iPad. You can, you can watch Ice Hogs hockey from anywhere uh, through AHL TV. So there's still going to be plenty of ways to access. And, you know, you, you ask about the interaction, what we're going to do. We're going to try to be as interactive as possible throughout the course of this season. And, uh, you know, Joey, hats off to you. You did a great job throughout this whole, uh, this whole I guess, downtime, uh, pause, whatever you want to call it, keeping the interaction up. You know, I know we had a skeleton crew here with the Ice Hogs, but everybody on staff worked extremely hard, you know, to try to keep some interaction going through – this entire downtime dating back to, to last, Mar last March, March the 23rd to be exact. And, you know, we're going to try to keep that up uh, even more so with different interactions during the game through our mobile app. We're going to try to give away a bunch of prizes. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff we're still working on, but we want to make this as interactive as possible, whether it's in the broadcast, through our social media channels, or on our app. So it's uh, almost bringing the ice on in-game experience to, to everyone's house. Well, and that's going to make it a lot of fun to watch these games. And again, 23.2 Antenna TV, WIFR, if you're in the uh, state line area. Sports Fan Radio, 1330 AM, if you're on the radio. But also the uh, audio streams will be online, IceHogs.com, Sports Fan Radio, 1330.com, the IceHogs mobile app. I mean, there's going to be plenty of ways to uh, to listen to the games as well. And that's every single game. And if you are an IceHogs season and ticket holder, Mike, there's a special offer, thanks to our friends at BMO Harris Bank, that they want to thank them for their dedication and their patience during all of this uh, with a, a nice little surprise from HLTV as well. Yeah, absolutely. All of our active season ticket holders, uh, whether you're full season or 20 game pack. And when we say active, we mean anybody who's, who's, you know, got a deposit down on seats or, or better where you may, some people have already paid their seats, seats off for this year, which will probably turn into next year. But everybody who's an active season ticket holder is going to receive uh, access to every single Ice Hogs game through AHL TV. And yeah, thanks to, to BMO Harris Bank for stepping up and helping us out with that. You know, they've been such great partners of the Ice Hogs and this arena for, for the past several years. And, you know, it, uh, it, it's awesome having partners like that, that they want to, you know, help out and make sure that the, the fans stay engaged. And, you know, again, you can, you can bring the Ice Hogs anywhere with AHL TV. And it's, it's a super cool opportunity for our season ticket holders. And for season ticket holders, you'll receive uh, information through your email um, on how you can attain uh, that account and set up for AHL TV. And of course, if you want more information or if you want to upgrade or be a part of that to get that free AHL TV account uh, where you can stream pretty much anywhere, um, again, visit the IceHogs website, icehogs.com. But it's an exciting day, again, celebrating the uh, schedule release of the 2020-2021 campaign. And again, the IceHogs website will be where you can go to download your PDF version, print it up, put it on your refrigerator, start circling those dates, and uh, all thanks to the hard work that uh, our director of business operations, Mike Peck and company have done uh, to put it all together. Mike, great to catch up with you. Great to see you. And I'm looking forward to getting this uh, hockey season underway. Absolutely. I think we're all itching to get the puck on the ice and uh, you get the ice hogs back rolling. So Joey, great job. And uh, let's have fun.